Uh, I'd like to welcome everyone to the City Manager Spotlight. I'm here today with Chief Eric Harlow of the Guthrie Fire EMS. Welcome, Chief. Thanks. I'm glad to be here with you. Uh, Chief, I think first and foremost, can you kind of tell us about the history of the department? I've walked around uh, our facility today and uh, we got a little plaque in there on top of an apparatus that says the first apparatus uh, in the state of Oklahoma. So can you kind of tell us about the history of, of the yeah, fire department? Yeah, uh, of course everybody knows Guthrie was founded in the land run in 1889 and consequently our fire department was founded that same year. Uh, one of the first fire departments in the state of Oklahoma completely and uh, as such we're one of the longest standing departments around and we've got a lot of neat historical stuff um, just with the upbringing of this department throughout the years uh, as you included uh, we have a horse-drawn hose cart uh, from 1889 that was the first actual fire apparatus in the state uh, f of record that we're told so um, it's a nice thing to have on display in our lobby we've also got uh, a 1925 uh, fire engine of ours that's on display at the Oklahoma State Firefighters Museum that's been fully restored. And as with all things Guthrie, there's a lot of neat, interesting history with our department, just like the city. Can you tell us a little bit about what other services that we provide now other sure. than fire? Of course, we do all the, uh, the normal fire suppression uh, duties that a fire department provides. We also respond to car wrecks and rescue incidents. Uh, uh, to operate on those kinds. The unique thing about us is we also provide the ambulance for roughly the eastern two-thirds of Logan County, which um, is a huge part of our workload here. Um, around 2,000 calls a year just on the ambulance side alone. Yeah, can I go on that uh, a little bit further? I know that in my years as being a city manager, uh, when I talk about calls, uh, they go up every year and they go up significantly in the area of ambulance first responder. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how often uh, our your department is used to go out there and service the community? Yeah, uh, you know, last fiscal year I was looking at our runs just a couple days ago and uh, for fiscal year 2015, 87% uh, of our workload here was EMS related, which is emergency medical services related. Um, you know, car wrecks, uh, falls, heart attacks, strokes, uh, stuff of that type uh, makes up, which is the national standard. Um, more and more, more of the workloads on your fire departments are medical related. So uh, we're just kind of following the national norms with that. But, as things continue to grow, not only here in town, but in our areas outside of town, especially uh, south parts of Logan County that our ambulance district covers, um, we're seeing an ever-increasing number of runs uh, just due to the population increase. And how many people do we have inside the department uh, that go out and make all those runs each and uh, every We year? have three shifts of nine personnel each and then myself, which gives our department a total manpower strength of 28. And uh, for each of those three shifts, uh, as of today, there's two paramedics on board on each of those shifts. The majority of the department's either the advanced uh, EMT or intermediate EMT level, and uh, then the remainder of us, which uh, is our minimum requirements to even hire on our department is the EMT basic level. Can you kind of tell us a little bit about that? Because I know there's been an evolution in your department over the last couple of years sure. on just uh, how we uh, hire people and uh, what kind of training gets involved in becoming uh, a person. Yeah, um, we, we try, you know, being a small department, we, uh, we don't have a whole lot of time for, to uh, do a lot of training with a new person. So we like to hire those in that have experience, um, that have some certifications and training out of the way. And we're fortunate here, uh, being close to the Oklahoma City metro area, uh, one of our local career tech centers has a full-blown fire training academy. Uh, and we've taken advantage of uh, hiring several graduates out of that academy. And uh, they come to us with pretty much every bit of training they need other than local uh, orientation to our equipment and our ge geographical areas and stuff like that. So not only does it save us time, but it saves our, our city a lot of money in terms of training dollars. Um, and, and the other thing, we're getting a high quality, high trained uh, individual out of that academy, which helps us. Uh, we can put them to work a lot quicker uh, than if we hired uh, somebody with no experience and no training off the street. And can you tell us a little bit about the, the difference in that experience as someone that comes in uh, that uh, may just be a basic uh, uh, paramedic and someone who might be on the intermediate level and someone who is actually sure. a designated paramedic? Um, EMT basic level, which is the minimum that Oklahoma state law requires to even be able to be on an ambulance, um, can do some skills. They can give a patient oxygen, they can do bleeding control, uh, they can do some bandaging and some splinting and stuff of that like. As you go up to the high higher levels, the intermediate and the advanced levels. Uh, they can start uh, an IV on a person, they can intubate a person if they're having a breathing issue. Um, they can provide certain uh, small numbers of different drug administrations, but then you graduate into the highest level, which is the paramedic level, and they can do almost anything that can be done in an emergency room short of uh, full-blown surgery. 
Um, they can give different narcotic drugs. They can give uh, everything that everybody below them can give, um, up to and including a, a new procedure we've got about six months ago that allows uh, basically the paramedic to paralyze somebody in order to get their breathing under control, get their cardiac rhythm under control. If they're a combative patient after a traumatic incident, it allows them to be able to do their job in order to give them a better chance at saving their life. And uh, as you can tell, right here behind us is some of the uh, great equipment we have with the Guthrie Fire Department EMS. Uh, could you tell us, uh, kind of in general, uh, or in maybe even specific terms, how many pieces of equipment we have right now? Yeah, actually, you know, our station, we've been here a little over 10 years now, and uh, we, I think we outgrew it within a year of being in the facility uh, just due to the increasing uh, responsibilities that this department has gotten. Um, we ha house four ambulances that are all equipped at the uh, advanced life support level, which means uh, paramedic level down to the smallest EMT level. All the equipment is there that they need to operate and, and perform their life saving procedures. And we have two uh, engines or pumping apparatus that go on house fires and car fires and stuff of that nature. Um, we have a medium duty rescue unit, which you'll see behind Bruce here. Um, provides uh, plenty of space. It's basically a big toolbox on wheels. It carries all our heavy equipment to perform uh, vehicle rescues, rope rescues, water rescues, and stuff of that nature. We have four brush trucks that go on our wildfires, which we frequently have in this area, as everybody knows. Um, we have a few staff vehicles. Um, we have a rescue boat. And uh, then we have a Polaris uh, six-wheel drive ATV, which um, sounds fun, but it, it has a very specific use, and it's come in very handy. Uh, not only out in the wilderness areas when we go on emergency calls out there, but also here in town with the many festivals and, and concerts and stuff of that sort that we have here in town. The smaller vehicle allows us to get in these areas where uh, there's a lot of congested areas with people, cars, and stuff like that. It makes our job a lot easier and we're able to get a lot closer to the patient faster than we would with a big ambulance. And there's one piece of equipment I know that's not currently on site and that's a ladder truck. It's currently sitting out uh, at a different facility that the city owns and it's inoperable at this point in time. So could you tell us a little bit about that need sure. and why uh, we need that in our community? Um, as Bruce indicated, our ladder truck is a, it's a 1991 uh, 65 foot ladder uh, bought back in 1991 and unfortunately has experienced uh, mechanical failure. Um, it failed its uh, certification testing that we're required to do by national standards every year. And uh, basically the, the hydraulic system on the truck's completely inoperable. Um, it's full of leaks uh, due to the age and the manufacturer, the parts aren't available. And uh, even if they were, we were looking at a cost that was approaching the actual cost of the vehicle itself. So um, money-minded folks, it doesn't take you long to, to look at that and say it's not really worth fixing. Um, some people may question why do we need a ladder truck here in Guthrie. Well, one, this city's had one since the department was founded back in the late 1800s. Um, you drive downtown, which is our, our pride and joy, and just downtown alone we've got several three and four story plus buildings uh, which insurance office requirements uh, require us to have this ladder device. Um, not just the height downtown, but we've got the hotels, which another one being built as we speak. Um, another one just opened a few weeks ago. And uh, anything three stories or greater, our insurance office requirements uh, make us have to have one. Um, if we did not have one, uh, our residential insurance and com mainly our commercial insurance rates uh, would go sky high real quick. Um, we're, we're blessed to have a ISO rating of a four, um, which there's probably less than 30% of the departments in the country have that rating. And um, we're very, very close to having a three, which in Oklahoma is very unique. Um, the lower the number, the better the rating. Uh, 10 is basically having no fire protection. And we just dropped from a five to a four a little over a year ago. So we're, we're very happy about the efforts we've made to get that, uh, get that rating lowered. And uh, without that ladder truck, we run the risk of that rating going back up. And those ratings, how does that uh, directly impact a citizen and their back pocket? Uh, anybody that pays insurance on their house or business, they see that insurance premium. And uh, that premium, a, a good chunk of that is directly uh, related to the fire department in that jurisdiction's insurance rating. So and if our rating jumps from a four back up to a seven or eight, you're probably talking 50, 60% or more increase on your insurance premium. So. Yeah. 
a significant chunk in your pocket. Uh, and talking about jurisdiction and districts, we, we're a little bit unique uh, in your department as compared to some other departments uh, that uh, are in the city of Guthrie. We actually have a partnership with the county and Correct. we have uh, a, a separate district uh, when it comes to EMS. And I also know that we have uh, additional sales tax that comes from uh, the county that flows into yes. uh, to support our fire functions. Our, uh, our fire district outside of the city limits is about 151 square miles, so we cover a significant amount of area outside of the city limits, which uh, about the only city agency, I think, here that covers stuff outside of the city limits. Um, we are a participant with the uh, Logan County Fire Department. So there's 13 of us total, and we all share a, an equal uh, division of a one-quarter cent sales tax that's applied countywide. Um, which in years past, uh, it's generated around 100,000 a year per department. Um, some of the vehicles you see in our station today were provided solely by that, that money alone. And it's been a, uh, not just for us, but every volunteer and uh, paid department in this area, it's been a huge benefit for us to increase our, our levels of training, our equipment levels. Um, just our capabilities in general, it's been a huge benefit for us. And how about the funding for the EMS side and uh, how you guys uh, yeah. derive money for that? Uh, to currently, for the city of Guthrie has an, a contract with the uh, Logan County uh, EMS Board uh, District I-1, which Guthrie School District is District I-1. And our EMS district uh, that we have a contract for it mirrors the Guthrie School District in geography. Um, there is a three mil property tax collected on every property within that school district and uh, that money is given to that board who in turn contracts with the city of Guthrie to help supplement our funding. Um, that's only a, roughly a third to a half of the actual response area that our ambulance covers and uh, basically you have the citizens that uh, own property in the Guthrie school district subsidizing the cost of providing ambulance service to a lot of the folks outside of that school district, which includes Coyle, Langston, Meridian, uh, Mall Hall, uh, far south Logan County and the Edmond and Luther school districts. So we have a lot of area that's, uh, other than if they have an actual response, they're not paying anything for ambulance protection. And uh, we're of course working with the uh, county commissioners and a lot of the citizens here in Logan County to try to solve that problem and get funding for uh, all the areas that we cover. And it's not something that just affects us. Uh, in recent uh, months, Crescent's ambulance has had extreme money and manpower issues and uh, unfortunately had to, at least temporarily for now, close their doors. Um, we've stepped in as the good neighbors that we are and uh, tried to assume their ambulance coverage for now, but uh, they're faced with that same problem. There's not enough funding to hire the manpower that they need to cover their area. And uh, they're in the same boat that we were in the fact that they're covering not only the Crescent School District, but areas of the Mulhall School District and also the uh, Marshall area. So uh, countywide, we have a funding problem with ambulance and uh, we're going to keep working diligently with the commissioners and our citizens to try to figure out the best route to uh, hopefully rectify some of that. Well, we appreciate you uh, as administration on everything you do each and every day and all the guys that come in and spend hours and upon hours uh, waiting for that call to go out and uh, help serve the community. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like the, the citizens to know about uh, the Fire and EMS Department of the City of Guthrie? I can say, you know, we've got some of the best trained, uh, hardest working guys that I've ever been around and I've been in the fire service almost 18 years. And uh, it's just a pleasure to come to work and, and knowing every morning when I wake up that I'm, I'm going into a job that I enjoy, that these guys enjoy coming into, and, and we're proud to do what we do for our, not only the citizens here in Guthrie, but also the citizens outside of town that we serve every day. Well, uh, I'd like to thank uh, Chief Harlow for, the, uh, for being here uh, today with me on uh, the City Manager Spotlight. And if you see him or any other department heads or myself, feel free to stop us, ask us questions. Uh, we're here to serve you.